Hello, welcome to another Programming from A to Z video tutorial. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to load a text from a file uh, into your web page. And I'm going to use that for a lot of other examples and things that I'm going to do in later videos. So um, I'm, and I'm, again, I'm using the P5.js uh, framework. So first of all, let me just show you something that I have here. I have a text file as part of my folder along with the index.html and the sketch.js file. Obviously, I could have subdirectories and do various things like that. And this text file simply has a bunch of paragraphs of text from the uh, Wikipedia page on uh, Rainbow, the Rainbow Wikipedia page. So um, the very first thing I can do uh, that really makes it easy to load text is that I can write a function called preload. And the preload function is actually an event that happens before setup is called. So one of the goofy things about JavaScript is everything happens in this quote unquote asynchronous manner, meaning you start loading a file, and then you start doing something else, and you start doing something else, and you try to do something that uses the file, but maybe it's not loaded yet. And in a moment, I'm going to show you how to sequence this sort of stuff. And maybe later, I'll even show you more sophisticated ways to sequence this stuff. But right now, the easiest way is P5.js says, hey, if you don't want to worry about all of that, you can simply say, load strings rainbow.txt into a global variable called txt that I've made up. As long as I put that in preload, by the time I get to setup and I can do stuff to the DOM of the page, I know that that text will be loaded. And so what I'm going to do here is just add in here console.log txt so we can see what is it that's coming out of the file, which might be something that you don't expect. So I'm going to do this, and you can see here it is. Now, Weirdly enough, you can see like, hey, why is there this bracket there before there's a quote? There seems to be some sort of, and then there's like uh, this here, and then there's a comma and another quote. There seems to be some sort of array here. So let me do something to this file. I'm going to go to rainbow.txt, and I'm going to say rainbow, unicorn, blueberry. Uh, you know what's good too is mango. Who doesn't love mangoes? OK. Um, so I'm going to change the text file to just have four lines in it. And I'm going to refresh this page. And now you can see more clearly what's happening. So one of the things that load strings does for you, which is often very convenient, but not always so convenient, is that it gives you a body of text as an array, each element being the array, being each line of text in the file. So you know if you have some sort of like, uh, this can be very convenient if you have a text file of words. Like you might have a text file of words you're searching for, and suddenly you have them all in an array when you load that text file. That can be very convenient. In our case here, maybe what I want to do, and I'm going to undo all this so I have my rainbow text back. Maybe what I want to do is just put all this text onto the web page. And so uh, I might want to say in my code, uh, Create P, like make a paragraph with that text. Now let's see what happens. <laughs> Weirdly enough, <laughs> I love, sometimes you just kind of love JavaScript and libraries like P5.js. It like figured out something to do. It took the array and it just like made a paragraph out of the entire, all the things in the array. And I think it actually got everything. But um, another thing that I could do is I could use a function called join, which takes all the elements of the array and joins them together. And I could actually join them with a br tag in between them. So you can see now if I say join everything in that array and put a br tag, and I think I'm probably supposed to type it like this as a self-closing tag. Um, then what you'll see here, if I refresh it, is now I actually am maintaining the line breaks from that file in terms of rendering the stuff from that text file on the web page. So this is a very quick and easy way to pull in a text file and display that on the page. So I'm going to use this in later examples. You could think of things you might want to do, like chop up the text file, count all the words in it, analyze it, that sort of thing, load multiple text files. You could call load strings multiple times. But there's two more things I need to show you in this video. Number one is you don't always just want to like load the file in preload. You might want to only load the file when the user clicks a button or something like that. And number two is you might want the user to be able to submit an actual text file. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Okay. Um, someone in the chat actually, by the way, asked, how does one do CSV files? So you could actually load a CSV, which is a comma-separated values file, which is like a um, 
spreadsheet, so to speak, and then parse it and you split and chop it up via commas. And I might show you how to do that in another video. But there is actually a P5.js function called load table, which knows how to load a CSV file into something called a table object that you can traverse and iterate over as if it's uh, with spreadsheet-like functionality. But that's uh, for another time. Uh, OK. Um, so now, let me get rid of preload. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, my HTML file, and I'm going to add a button. And I'm going to call this button, uh, give it an ID called load file, and load a rainbow text. And now we can see if I go to the web page, we should see I have a button called load rainbow text. And if I go to the sketch, what I want to do now is first, I want to access that button via its ID. So I select it from the page. Now I have a variable that knows about that button. And then I can say button.mouse pressed. And I can reference a function. I can say load. I can write a function called load file. So now I can write that function here. So now I've written a function called load file. And what I want to do in that function is call load strings on that file name. Here's the issue, though. Now that I'm not using preload, I can no longer just set the result of load strings to a variable. What I need to have now is a callback. So I'm going to say load this text file. And then I'm going to make a function called file loaded. File loaded. And that function, I'm going to, oops, I'm just going to write it up here, is going to be the function that is triggered when the text file is ready. So there's a whole sequence happening here. I press the button on the mouse. Load file happens. I call load strings. When the text is ready, I call file loaded. And what comes in there? Data. I give this function an argument. I'm going to call it data. I could call it text. I could call it anything. And what I can do now is I can say text, oops, whoa, text equals data. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, when the file is loaded, the argument to this function is filled with the stuff that's in that file. I can set it equal to my global variable. But I actually don't really even need the global variable anymore. It sort of depends what I'm doing here. But what I'm going to do is instead, whoops, I'm going to get rid of this global variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to put it in here. And I'm going to say data. So I'm going to create that paragraph when the text is ready. So I'm setting up now a sketch. When I run the sketch, nothing happens. But as soon as I say this, I load that text, and it appears on the page. So this is how you can sequence the loading of data from a file. And obviously, again, what can you do that's more interesting than just display that exact text back to you? Or might you have different buttons for different text, like choose your own source text for this web application that you're making, that type of thing. OK, so we've seen almost everything now. I have one more piece of this. What if instead of loading text from a file, I want the user to be able to, um, I want the user to be able to select a file themselves? So here's how I can do that. I can add to setup, I can say create file input. I'm just going to put that there with nothing else just to see that this does something. And I'm going to do this. And you can see, look at this. I now, by default, this just that create file input has created this whole choose file, no file chosen button thing on the page. So I'm getting a lot of functionality from the web browser for free. And of course, I could style this differently. I could change probably what it says there instead of choose file. I could do a lot of custom stuff. But I'm using the basic raw default behavior. So when I press choose file, it opens up a file menu for me. And I could you know, go here. And I could actually go and browse and find you know, my rainbow.txt file and select it. And you can see, there it is. Now, nothing happened. So what I need to do is I need to set up a callback for when the user selects a file. And there's some complications here. Because what if the user selects an image file? What if they select? A text file. What if they select a, um, you know, a, some other kind of file that I can't think of right now? So I might have to handle different kinds of files differently, or do some error checking and that type of thing. But basically, I know that I need a callback. So let's go and add a callback. Create file input, and I'm going to say I'm going to say file selected. 
So I'm going to write a function now called file selected, and I assume that file is going to get some argument. That function is going to get some arg an argument, and I don't know what's going to be there. I could look up in the documentation. So I'm just going to write console.log file. Now I'm going to run this, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to select that rainbow file, and you can see, ah, look at this. What did I get? I get a P5 file object. So there are lots of things here that I get. I have what kind of file is it? Uh, it has a type and a subtype. What's the name? Uh, how big is it? So what, that sort of thing. So number one thing that I can do here is I can just say, whoops, thing, I could say something like create p, you know, file.name plus file.size plus file.type. So right now I'm going to create a, um, I could create a paragraph element with stuff, uh, stuff about that particular file. So if I refresh the page, I select that file. You can see, ah, I got rainbow.txt. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. It's got 12,000 some bytes in it. That's way too big. Uh, and it's a text file. I could uh, you know, select my HTML file. It's still a text file. I could look at the subtype. Um, I could try to get, I, I feel like there must be an image file somewhere on this computer, but I don't, I'm not going to bother to look for it. I'll, I'll let you experiment with that yourself. So you can see I can have the browser, I can have my code know about the file that the user selected. And even better, I can get access to the contents of that file. And the way that I do that, whoops, what did I just, what did I click here? Ah, no, stop. There, sorry. Um, I can, uh, oops, I'm in the, I, I lost. Uh, I want to show you other stuff about the developer tools later, but I got lost in there. So what I want to do now is reproduce the contents of that file. And I'm going to say uh, right here, create p uh, file dot, and I think it's file dot data. I believe the actual contents of the file is in file dot data. So I'm going to do choose file. I'm going to pick this. And you can see, there it is. Here's all the contents there. Now, I'm not, it's not coming in as an array, so I don't have the line breaks. I could do a replace to put BR tags in it. I'm not going to worry about all that right now. But ultimately, I I've, I've now have the user able to select a text file that I can process and return something back to the user. Um, the other thing that I will mention here is that I might want to protect and say, hey, only if file.type equals text then create that paragraph. Otherwise, say I, I need a text file. So here, with a little bit if statement, I can add some error checking here. So if I run this again, and I say choose file, and I go uh, somewhere on this computer under applications, and I, I don't know, I try to get this chess application, and I select that, it could say, look, Here's this giant application, but I need a text file. So you can, you can do some sort of error checking and that sort of thing uh, with, um, with, within your code as well. Now, there's two more things about this, probably more than two. There, if you look in the documentation, there is a way to allow, and I'm going to look this up for you right now, uh, create file input uh, p5.js. Hopefully this is going to bring me to that page. Um, it did not, so I'm going to find it myself. I'm going to go to uh, p5js.org. I'm going to go to libraries. I'm going to go to p5dom, and I'm going to look for create file input. Um, there is a second argument, which if you add, allows the user to select multiple files. And you have to handle those a little bit differently. Maybe I'll, so you'll see this in some of my examples, or maybe I'll come back to this in a future video. So if you want the user to be able to select multiple files, Take a look at this. That's there for you. And the other thing that I'll show you is that you can have um, a user, uh, you can, instead of having the user have to select a file, you can actually also have a user uh, uh, able to just take a text file and drag it into the browser, drop it in the browser, and have your program process that file. And ugh, geez, why is my phone ringing incessantly? I have to turn that off. Hold on, I'm turning on airplane mode. Uh, okay, um, so <laughs> um, 
If you want to learn how to do that, I'm going to publish examples that go along with the A to Z course that have that in it. But I've already made a video tutorial about drag and dropping a file into the browser. So uh, I'm just going to Google drag and drop Schiffman YouTube. And I'm sure this video is going to come up right now. Uh, so I'm going to reference you. You'll find a link to this video in this video's description and probably some kind of pop-up thing happening right now. If you want to take a look at that, you can go ahead and watch the drag and drop a file video tutorial to see how that works. All right, uh, thanks very much for watching. This concludes the sequence of videos about how to get text from the user.